In the last few sessions, we got into the basics of working with brushes, and in this session, we're going to get into actually creating designs with brushes in Curl Draw, working with our 400 brush pack. And you're going to be pretty amazed when you see how easy it is to create these custom designs very easily in Draw using brushes, once you understand how they work and working with the other tools that are available in Draw. Of course, you've got all the benefits of being able to customize and change everything and swap things out, and we'll take a look at some of that in this particular session. So what I'll do to get started here, we're just going to take this simple baseball and create a pretty off-the-wall design with it pretty easily, pretty quickly, working with brushes. The first thing I want to do, go ahead and take my baseball here, and I'll just place it down here at the bottom of my graphic. Now, we saw that when we resize brushes in draw, we can have issues. So if you're doing this type of design work, you typically want to be working to size for working on t-shirts. You'll want to be about 12 inches wide and stay within those constraints so you don't have to go back and change the size of your brushes if you do some tweaking. But First thing I want to do is just create a wing type graphic to go here. Now, to do that, I'm going to do it a little bit differently, perhaps, than uh, you might think. Now, I could come in and just start drawing my feathers in directly in draw by grabbing a feather. Actually, I'll go to my hand drawn feathers here. Feathers, wings. I've got black chopped graphic. Actually, I think I'll go with chopped here and grab a black feather. Which one do I want? Actually, I'll probably grab this one right here. And I can just start drawing these, as you can see there. I'm going to hit Control z But actually, what I'm going to do to do this is I'm just going to go ahead and get my Bezier tool, because I want to show you how simple it is to work with these. So I'm going to get my Bezier tool, and I'm just going to create some lines here. And I'll take that line, and I'll just kind of spread that out. And just by duplicating it, left click, right click one time, and then bring that down around my baseball and rotating it just a little bit, starting to rotate it as I go. Making sure that I got things centered up on my lines. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because I'll have about the same distance between each brush, and I want to make sure that that's about where I'm at when I get these brushes going here. And actually, I'll just go ahead and start working with my shape tool here. Now, what I'm doing with my shape tool here, I've got Enable Node Tracking turned on in my options, so that allows me to uh, just select something and then go right to a shape tool. Whenever I'm over a node, my cursor will convert to the shape tool. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this here. And we'll bring this here. Do the same thing here. And just left-click, duplicate again. And we'll bring this down here. This I want to line up here. Just a little bit more, and I'm just gradually bringing this out because the feather is really nothing more than a series of lines that are spread out with, excuse me, not the feather, but a wing that are spread out with the feathers on them, so I can just spread that right out. Now, I'm going down through here. I'm going to do the same here. Bring this down this way. I'm going to hit my space bar. Do the same down here. Bring this down this way. Hit my space bar again. And there's my basic feather shape. Now I'm going to go through and tweak this a little bit. Take this, right click here, convert to curve, and I'll change the shape of that there. Take this here, right click to curve, bring that up also, arch that, same thing here, to curve, and I'll bring that there, same thing here, right click to curve. And I'll arch this down here. Here I'll start just getting straight because I know these feathers will want to start changing direction down here. Right about here. And I'm just looking for the balanced shape of a wing here pretty much. And I'll go ahead and convert this to a curve. And then here I'll take and convert this to a curve. Just working with my lines and bring this down here. Arch that way. And this to a curve. Same thing here, and then right here to a curve also. And we'll go ahead and arch this and bring this over this way, right there. Now, now that I've got that set up, all I'll do is simply go ahead and lasso everything, go to my artistic media, come down and click on my brush stroke, and that'll be applied to my feather. Now I can go ahead and tweak this. Now, I'm looking at this size-wise, and I've got this feather up here at the top, and I like this. But I want this to be a little bit bigger, so I'm going to bring this up in size because that's the top feather. Not quite that much, but right about there. Do the same thing here. Now we've got the wind blowing pretty good here. 
I'm sure you can hear that. It'll probably pass in just a minute. Go ahead and click there. Now I've got my basic wing shape set up here. Now once I've set this up, the really cool part is that I can change the feathers out on this really easily. I can go back to my artistic media tool and see what it looks like with different feathers from my supply. And that's a different feather hooked up on there. Now what I've got here is at the top, that feather's got an issue. Something's going on with the way that line's set up. And all I need to do is just tweak that and that feather will come back as you can see there. Different look, different feathers. Very easy to customize and go through change and create multiple designs and multiple looks very easily. I'll hit Control Z and go back to that other feathers. Now that my feathers are set up, I want to bring something in to tie this together, kind of bring it around the outside of the ball. And actually what I'll do is I'll go with a different brush stroke for that. Go to my artistic media tool and make sure that I'm going to go to a different brush here. Let me see what we want to take a look at here. I actually think I'll go to beveled shapes and select OK. And I'll probably come in here and grab something like this brush here. Now here I'll start working with a pen. And that looks okay, but I'm not sure I'm happy with that. I'm going to bring that down in size and take one more peek at that stroke. Start down here at the bottom, bring this up here, and then go over this way. And actually, that doesn't look too bad. That looks pretty good. I'm going to bring that down in size. Just so that it fits in the balance of the design a little bit better. And we'll use that as the starter for our wing or the object that our wing is tucked into. Now... I'm going to go ahead and change that just a little bit. I'm going to bring this and wrap this bottom down here around like it's coming up under the baseball with that type of look that you see there now. Nice graphic being developed here. Now that being in there, the next thing I want to do is add something coming out of the side of the wings here to add some more effect to that. I'm going to need to make a little adjustment here. I think I can just move this just to make sure i got all these feathers tucked in here. Actually what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and double click this. I can see I got some of the, the white from the feathers coming through here. I'm going to zoom in and see what's going on there. And let me see here. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this object. Get my node here. Delete that node. And I can see that what's happening here is my graphics are overflowing just a little bit on the others here. And I want to bring that back here. And then I can come here to these feathers, bring those back. But if I do that, I get an issue. So the best thing to do is go with a double stroke there of this particular effect or this particular brush. So I'll right click, move that copy here, resize that, bring that down like there, and then I'm going to go ahead and get my nodes here and size this up and change the size and have it flow together a little bit more. Get a really different look going on here. And then I'll go ahead and change the size of that brush. And I'm going up instead of down right there. So now I've got that set up. Now that being the case, since I've got that set up going here, I'm actually going to take this here and change the shape of that. I'll double click there, come down and get this node. Actually what I'm going to do is drop a node right here, double click and put a node there. Bring this down and kind of arch this up the other way. Give it a bit of a different look there. So here we've got our wing set up with our 3D there. Now what's the black I'm seeing there? Let me zoom in there and take a look. I'm seeing some black down here at the bottom. And that's just part of that shape. That'll be fine. <clears throat> now, having my wing set up, I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here off to the side of the baseball. And then what I'll do is I'll left click, bring this over to the other side, hold down control, not left click, but right click, release and select copy here. Now I'm working with my pen, so I'm the reverse of a mouse, working with a mouse. So now I've got this nice setup here with the wings going on in the background of the baseball. Go ahead and take this baseball and just resize this a bit. I could leave this in the back of the page or the front of the page, but I'm going to bring it order to front of page right there. And I like the way that's setting up there currently at the moment. Now, that being the case, I've got this nice wing set up here. Next thing I want to do is I want to bring some text in here. And that text will be in Corel's going to process a save here. And that text will be, I'm going to go back to my mouse for that, and we'll just call that West Hill. And the West Hill, I'm going to change the font to something maybe Western here. We'll come down through here and get a different font. Let's see.
and I'll go with Ironwork Extended. That'll be my West Hill font. And I'll bring that right up here across the top. I'm going to fill that with a white and give that a pen outline of, let's say, 5 millimeters behind fill, scale with image. Behind fill, scale with image, advanced. I want to round my corners and end caps. Select OK. Now, this being set up here, what I want to do with this next is go to my envelope tool. I'm going to bring this up just a little bit, add some effects to this real quickly here. Effects and add perspective. Hold down Shift and Control. And now I've got a nice West Hill text there across the top. I'll go ahead and resize that. The next thing I want to do is add some effects inside of that with brushes. I'll go back to my pen here or I could use my mouse either way. I'm going to go to a different effect here. I'm going to go to my soft airbrush shapes here. Select OK. I'm actually going to take this West Hill and convert it to curves because I'm going to want to power clip inside it. So I'll right click and select convert to curves. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to put a much larger outline on that, say 10. I actually bring that down to 8. Select OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and paste that. Again, I'm going to change that outline to white. I'm going to go ahead and paste that again. I'm going to change my outline to black and change it again. Change the outline to black. I want to change the size of that to 2 millimeters. Now you can see I've got that nice outline going on around the west hill. It's out of center a little bit with the end of that L, but I'll just left, left click that W and bring that over this way just a bit. Now, to start working for effect in my text, what I want to do is do a nice airbrushed flame type effect for this. And the way I'll do that is I'll go to my... I've got these soft airbrush type brushes here, and we'll take a look at these. You can create some really cool effects with these. But that's going to need to be a little bit bigger. 0.05 is not going to work on that. You can see it's kind of like a flame shape. Nice soft airbrush look. A lot of different effects on these brushes that you can create that we've created here with this 400 brush pack. But what I'll do is I'll take this, and I'm going to go ahead and just create a brush mark here going in that direction. I'm going to bring that down in size to, say, about 1.0 right there. And then I'm just going to right click on that, bring that over my West Hill text, release my right mouse button and select power clip inside. Then I'm going to go right click on this and go to edit contents, edit contents. And I'm just going to start going different ways with these brush strokes right through this graphic or this West Hill text, creating a really off the wall effect for this design. Now I could change the color of this to a red with a yellow or whatever, but I'm going to right click, finish editing this level. Corel will refresh that, and then you can see you've got a nice, cool effect going on there. And then I could come back into that with some fashion factor, would have you. If I wanted to, it really wouldn't matter. But here I've created a nice wing set with everything all set here. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to bring some other effects down in here, kind of set this off into an entirely different direction. Now you can see we're using brushes for many different things, drawing our wings, creating our effects, doing all kinds of different things. And with the brushes we've set up with those 400 brushes, create all kinds of different designs and looks very easily and then if you want to change or see how it looks with a different look you can do that very easily. For example if I'm curious of how I'm going to look with different feathers or I want to show the client this design with different feather looks I can go back to my feathers. Let's go ahead and go to our hand drawns here. Go to feathered wings. Go to hand drawn. Select OK and I'm going to grab a hand drawn black which would be right here. That'll process that, and I've got an entirely different look there. I can change the size of those. And I've got an entirely different look going on with that look, and then I could show the client both ways if I wanted to. I could go in and tweak it even more, but I'll hit Control Z and go back to the regular brushes. Or if I wanted to see what this looked like with the metallic beveled look for the wings, I could do that also. I could go here and go back to my um, beveled shapes, select OK, Come down in here and click on one of these beveled shapes, let that process, and now I can see what the wing looks like with a beveled shape, and it actually looks pretty cool. That might work just fine. Probably add some more feathers in there and do the same over here. We can do a lot of tweaking on this design, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'll go ahead and move on here. I'll hit Control Z, but you can see the power of these brushes. We can just change things out, tweak them, change them, and customize them. I want to bring some effects down in here. Now, I think for effects, I want to come in with something kind of half-tony. 
So I'm going to go to my brushes here again, and I'll come down here into my, let me see, I'll go into my warped abstract brushes. Make sure you don't have this selected because you don't want to apply that effect to all those when you click on something. I'm going to come in here to, let's take a look at, let's say this here. And I'm just going to create this brush stroke. I'm going to need to bring that up in size significantly for that to work there. And that's a kind of off the wall half tone effect, but I don't really like that. And something like this, not really. Something like that. And that's kind of different look there. Click on that. I'm going to go back to my mouse. Sometimes I struggle with the um, pen tool. And we'll click again. And we'll just go ahead and reposition this. And see how this looks. I don't really like that. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Start working with my pen here. And really all I want, I'm going to go ahead and get my Bezier tool. All I want is something that's kind of going to sweep in through here and then come down across the bottom like that just to create some effect coming down off the bottom of the design. Go back to my artistic media tools and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go actually I'll go up to um, abstract shape particles and I'll grab one of those and see how they look. That's kind of a different look there but I'm not really happy with that. That half tone's too big. This will actually work right here, I believe. Yes, it will. I'll go ahead and take this, and what I'm going to do is I'll just get my pick tool, double click on this, and I want to change the shape here just a little bit. Bring this up into here, resize this, and bring it down so it's arched with the wings a little bit more. Bring it right down into there, and then I'm going to go ahead and resize this brush, bring it down in size to right about, I would say there, maybe down to 1.5, right there. So I got that set up as a different effect going in, playing off the wings, going down the design. I'm going to fill that with a gray, take the outline off of that, and we'll right click and select order and go to back of page, other layer, OK. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this over here on the other side. Now, when you're dealing with the brushes here, if you want to mirror, you can see I don't have it available because I'm in the brushes. All you do is left click, hold down, start moving, hit your control key, and that'll constrain your movement when you mirror that. And you can bring that right back into the center here. And I'm just going to bring this and hold down control so that these are centered. And because that's another layer, it'll already be automatically be at the back of the page. So now I've got my West Hill set up in here. I've set up my wings and everything's set up around my baseball with some really cool effects. And I will put this together very quickly. And as I said, everything's customizable, editable, and changeable, so you can tweak this all you want or set up multiple designs with it. So we'll go ahead and wrap here on the working with brushes session, but you can see how easily I set up this full design with these brushes, and we'll continue in our next session.